Hey guys, I want to take a minute to talk to you guys about... Hi, I want to talk to you guys about the safest way to breathe when picking something up so that you can protect your back from injury. Now, quite often I have this conversation, I'll have people that come to me and they have a yoga or a Pilates background and they've been drilled in with a particular way of breathing that fits those types of exercises. And I've done them before and I've actually been in the same shoes where I got kind of confused because there's ways of breathing in and out that help actually release tension and create more space and room so you can move and increase your range of motion. But that's not what we're looking to do when we pick things up because we're looking to protect our back. So the more loosey-goosey we are as we're picking something up, the more we're actually putting ourselves in a position where we can hurt our back, whether it's from shear forces through the spine or compressive forces because you're picking something heavy up and it's kind of putting all this weight on the spine. So here's, here's the analogy that I use, ready? I think of uh, a can of soda. If you've got a can of soda, it's just this like really simple little piece of circular aluminum tube, but if it's closed and it has the fluid and the gas in there, it's got this pressure pushing out and you can't crush it. You can try and try and try and I don't know, I'll give a prize to anyone who can actually crush with their hands a can of soda. Uh, but as soon as you pop that top and you let the gas out, you release the pressure and it's much easier to just smoosh it down. And your body is the same way. Essentially, your lungs are just like the same canister as that can of soda, just flesh and bone instead. But if I were to be squatting or picking something heavy up doing yard work, and I wanted to protect my back from that compressive force so I don't injure a disc, or again, that shear force to keep it rigid, I'm actually gonna act like that can of soda. I'm gonna take a big deep breath, expand everything, every which way, not just up in my, in my, in my chest, but big breath, close the can of soda, and then I'm actually gonna contract and keep everything really tight. So I'm increasing the amount of pressure that's in my, my trunk and it's actually now pushing up and out. So when I put some weight on my shoulders, a few hundred pounds, all this gas inside of me is now resisting the compression and it protects my back in a number of different ways. So the, uh, the next part of that is, well, how do I breathe, right? I'm holding this big, heavy thing. How am I gonna breathe? I don't have, do I have to do the whole set holding my breath? Uh, well, I mean, I guess if you're doing a set of one or two, then sure, but you need to breathe. So there's, it gets a little bit trickier. It depends on whether you're picking something up off the floor, or putting it up, but essentially I like to hold the breath and as I'm contracting the muscle to kind of push the weight away or push away, if I'm picking something up off the floor, as I'm pushing away into the floor to deadlift, I, I might give a little, let a little bit of the pressure out so I get some of the oxygen out of my lungs. So as soon as I'm in a good, safe place at the top, I take a quick sip of air, seal up the soda can again, protect the spine, and then I'm back down to the floor. And then you could choose to either breathe again at the floor if you want, and at the top, or if I'm pushing something up overhead, I can either push it, breathe at the bottom or at the top. I tend to breathe at the top because I feel when the bar is down here, and if it is heavy enough to be worrying about this, it's kind of hard to breathe there. So that's how you can use a different type of breathing technique to actually protect your back from injury when you're lifting heavy things.